What's up guys? Welcome to Supercars of London and day one of our epic road trip. I have arrived down at the Channel Tunnel. I am not the first one here however. There are a few people here with a surprise that I was not expecting. Mr. JWW has come down in his Porsche GT3 <laughs> and it's not, it's not silver. It's not silver it is a frozen satin blue and it looks incredible. We've got black badges at the back and Seb Delaney is also here with his racing uh, helmet. Hello. You brought your skid lid as well. So yeah. Hey, hey, I brought my helmet just so, in case, you never know. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I'm yeah. tired, but I'm very I'm excited. 4 a.m. So we went to sleep at 1. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at the carpets. Seb, you've got a house in there now. You can welcome people. Where's okay. the wel where's the welcome mat? Yeah, right, right. You can wipe your feet when you get So that's Seb's boot. And check out mine. Completely different to the Lamborghini and also the R8. But look. I've got a full-blown suitcase. I've also got a drone here, which we're going to get up in Monaco. And I've got my luggage and Sam's head cams, Olfi cameras that I used yesterday for the McDonald's roulette, which the audio didn't really work. And I'll tell you why. It's because I put the exterior mount over the camera, which blocked the microphone. So apologies for that. Hey Seb? I'm what? just jealous. You're jealous. <laughs> you got working aircon, working stereo system. Oh yeah, say what happened to your stereo system in your Lotus. So I've only got one working speaker out of like six. <laughs> so I can't hear anything. <laughs> Plus with my exhaust, I genuinely I don't have music in my car. So I'm gonna oh, be by mate. myself without music oh, for 14 I, hours. Well, luckily, I know how you feel because I had to endure that kind of with the Lambo, so... Can you put your your radio next to your speakers when you play music? So I can hear music? Yeah, I can do that, yeah, and I'll just have an entire... Yeah, exactly. Just hold the walkie-talkie down. Yeah, yeah, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> Whoa! We are in France! And I really, really hope the audio is a lot better. We're using the skeleton shell for the interior shot, so I apologise. Oh, your car looks so fucking beastly following me. <laughs> We've made it to France and I am excited. We have got a long, long drive ahead of us. We've got about 10 hours, so it is going to be a long one. But we've got plenty of time to talk about why I picked the Mercedes-Benz AMG GTS over some of the other cars, which arguably are technically more supercar than this. Here we go, guys. We have hit the highway north of France and first of all smooth comfortable quiet with a beautiful steering wheel Alcantara and two days 48 hours after the unveiling of this car has gone live I wanted to make this video to answer as many questions as possible that you guys have as to why I picked this car. There was a huge amount of positivity around this specific car, the AMG GTS, but I know some of you guys wanted to see something maybe a little bit more hardcore like the 570S, the Huracan, the 458. There were so many good contenders to the Lamborghini replacement that I just thought that I'd make this video as why I picked this car over the others so you can understand my reasoning a little bit and the most important thing about any of this the one thing that made such a huge difference in my decision making of a new car was the fact that I could actually drive the cars whereas the R8 and the Lamborghini I bought them blind I didn't drive them until I actually had paid the money picked it up this car I was able to test and try before I buy, which is why I was so excited about actually collecting this car more than the others, because I knew exactly what I was going to get. I knew exactly what was going to happen when I picked the car up, and I know exactly how this car is going to perform on this road trip. And I have to say one word, it is going to be epic. So the fact that I was able to actually test these cars and almost live with them, borrow them for over 24 to 48 hours, was a major factor in terms of making my decision, working out what car I actually wanted to live with. So I suppose let's just get straight into it. We're in Northern France and we've got an entire country to go through. And let's start by going through the cars that I could have bought and why I didn't buy them. So we'll start with Aston Martin, go in alphabetical order. The V12 Vantage S was within budget. The Vanquish 
probably was just outside of the budget. I wouldn't have gone for the early Vanquish with the clunky gearbox. I would have had to have gone for the ZF. V12 Vantage S that I drove was a fantastic car and I did really enjoy driving it behind the driver's seat. It was very comfortable on long distance drives, but I did feel that the gearbox was very similar to the Lamborghini and around town, I think it would still have the same sort of problems or niggles that I felt in the Lamborghini. The other thing with Aston Martin is their fuel economy was absolutely horrific and they're known for it. So I was testing them already knowing that it probably wasn't the best car suited for a road trip. Moving on down the list to Bugatti because we're going in alphabetical order, they were out of my price range. Ferrari, the Ferrari 458 Italia, an amazing car but, but because the value of the car is holding very nicely and potentially appreciating because it's the last naturally aspirated V8 with the double clutch gearbox before the 488 came along, it would be very mileage sensitive, which is one of the reasons that I got out of the Lamborghini. So I want to drive this car a lot. So the Ferrari being an amazing car that it is, it is an out and out supercar. You have to spec it with the carbon bucket sport seats because for resale value and all of the really boring stuff that you have to consider when you're looking at buying a new car. The Ferrari 458 just unfortunately wasn't the right car to change the Lamborghini for. I think it's got some practicality elements to it. The seven year warranty and seven year servicing pack that you get with the 458 is definitely a pro. But unfortunately, some of the other things that were involved with owning a Ferrari, just I couldn't see myself replacing the Lamborghini with the Ferrari 458. Let's move on to Lamborghini and the Lamborghini Huracan, the rear wheel drive, the Spider, and the 610-4. Now, all of these cars are arguably some of the best supercars out there. They are flawless. Lamborghini, unfortunately, just out of my price range, just out of my price range. They are too expensive, and it's as simple as that. They are amazing cars, I do love them, but they are out of my price range. Let's get back to Audi, because Audi, I can kind of fit in with the Lamborghini Huracan, but I didn't pick that car for very different reasons. That car is flawless. It is one of the best supercar packages that you could possibly get. However, I did want rear wheel drive. I did one rear wheel drive and that car is so clinical and the Quattro system is so good that I just wasn't sure how much play I'd be able to have in that car. I actually went down to Watford Audi and spoke to them about doing a deal on an R8 V10 Plus and I did drive one off camera, it's a fantastic car. I'd love to get behind the wheel and do a video on one. However, I knew they were gonna depreciate, I knew they were gonna fall off a cliff in the price and the price that Audi Watford could give me would mean that if I took delivery of it two months ago, I would have lost 30 grand by now. And anyone with common sense knows that that is a bad move. And so here we go, let's move on to McLaren because arguably the most popular car alongside the AMG GTS that you guys wanted to see as the replacement to the Lambo. What McLaren are doing at the moment is they are building a brand as quickly as possible, which is why they are building so many cars so quickly. The 570 GT is also coming out very soon, but the waiting list was way too long. And I will be intrigued to drive that car because if it's more refined, a little bit softer than the 570S, then I think it'll be a very, very good car. But the problem that I have with McLaren, again, like Aston Martin, is that they depreciate pretty quick unless you've got a McLaren P1. And when I drove the 570S, this is when things get a little bit interesting, and I didn't actually document it on camera because I was filming separate videos. I think if I was daily vlogging, it would have popped up, but because I had in my head what I wanted to film with the 570S, I couldn't show you what happened off camera. The McLaren 570S and McLarens in general, they are developing cars in the public eye. They are continually developing cars, they are always getting software updates, and they are developing cars right in front of us, which is an amazing experience. But the McLaren versus Mercedes, Mercedes have just got massive budgets. The cars are so well built. This car I knew was going to be incredibly reliable and just as much, if not, and I would say, having driven this car and the 570S, this is more fun to drive, more comfy to drive, and an all-round better car. And I know the 570 has won in categories and reviews over the AMG GTS, the R8 V10 Plus, and technically, 
a lot of people class the McLaren 570S as a super sports car because it's 140 grand, but if you want one, it's gonna be 180 grand once you put options on it, which is just, it's 650S, 488 money. So it is definitely a supercar, but McLaren have been very clever with the way that they market that car. Like I was saying, off camera, the car, going back to the developing side of it, I was locked out of gear quite a few times. The start stop was very, very fluctuant. and Maybe I did have a bad example. It was a demonstrator that maybe hadn't had all of the software updates. It had a very annoying rattle here. And there was just some real teething problems that I could see coming through the car that I just wasn't prepared to experience on ownership. Even though it looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, has got incredible doors, it just could not be the replacement, which is how I landed on the AMG GTS. And no way did I make the decision based on all of the flaws on the other cars and thought, well, I just have to get the AMG GTS then. Over the last six months, I have progressively fallen in love with this car. And I just began to fall in love with it. I saw more and more on the road. The way this car sits on the road, it's so wide, it's so low, it's so aggressive. And it's got a bit of an old school feel to it as well with a long nose with the engine that sits in the front. I basically sit on the rear wheels. So I've got a fantastic feel of the rear wheels, which is really, really fun for me to just experience this car as a rear wheel drive car. AMGs are known for being absolutely phenomenal 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 they sound incredible there are so many pros to absolutely zero cons that i have been able to find in this car i've got two cup holders a bottle of water and a can of monster which i'm going to drink on this journey and fundamentally this was my favorite car out of all of the contenders after driving them this was the car that i wanted to buy that is why this is the replacement to the lamborghini and again i will say that even if you think that this might not be a supercar at the moment, wait till I'm finished with what I'm gonna to do to this car. Make sure that you're tuning in tomorrow. Please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and click subscribe as well because this week, next week, and throughout the duration of this insane road trip, there's gonna be some amazing content, awesome supercars, and hopefully some epic adventures. So thank you for watching guys, and I will see you soon. Cheers.